In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. Prepare ourselves to worthily celebrate the sacred mysteries we call to mind our sins and our need for God's mercy and compassion. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. And our intentions for our Mass this morning is for all the benefactors of Carmel, living and dead, for all the souls in purgatory, for the conversion of sinners, and for the reign of God's kingdom on earth. O oh God, who in your inexpressible providence were pleased to choose Saint Joseph as spouse of the most holy mother of your son, grant, we pray, that we who revere him as our protector on earth may be worthy of his heavenly intercession. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings. Now when the Lord was about to take Elijah, up to heaven by a whirlwind. Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. They came to Jericho, and Elijah said to Elisha, Tarry here, I beg you, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the sons of the prophets also went and stood at some distance from them. As they both were standing by the Jordan, then Elijah took his cord and rolled it up and struck the water, and the water was parted to the one side and to the other till the two of them could go over on a dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Ask what I shall do for you before I am taken from you. And Elisha said, I beg you, let me inherit a double share of your spirit. And he said, You have asked a hard thing. Yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it shall be so for you. But if you do not see me, it shall not be so. And as they still went on and talked, behold, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha saw it and he cried, My father, my father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. And he saw him no more. Then he took hold of his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. And he took up the coat of Elijah that had fallen from him and went back and stood on the bank of the Jordan. Then he took the coat of Elijah that had fallen from him, and struck the water, saying, 
Where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? And when he had struck the water, the water was parted to the one side and to the other, and Elisha went over. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Be strong, let your heart take courage, all who hope in the Lord. Be strong, let your heart take courage, all who hope in the Lord. How great is the goodness, Lord, that you keep for those who fear you, that you show to those who trust you, in the sight of the children of men. Be strong, let your heart take courage, all who hope in the Lord. You hide them in the shelter of your presence, Secure from human scheming, you keep them safe within your tent from disputing tongues. Be strong, let your heart take courage, all who hope in the Lord. Love the Lord, all you his saints. The Lord guards the faithful, but the Lord will repay to the full, the one who acts with a pride. Be strong, let your heart take courage, courage. all who hope in the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. If a man loves me, he will keep my word, says the Lord, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Thus, when you give alms, sound no trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may be praised by people. Truly, I say to you, they have had their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they, stand, they, they love to stand and pray in the synagogues, and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by people. Truly, I say to you, they have had their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door, and pray to your Father who is in secret. Your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces, so that their fasting may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have had their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Whenever I read this Gospel, I always think of Father Duncan who said something about it, that, uh, this particular gospel, that really clicked into place in my mind. I'd always wondered uh, what Jesus means by they've had their reward. And Father Duncan put it, put it very uh, simply. He said, the reward is the praise of other people. You've had their praise, so you've got everything you can out of it. Um, that desire for reward and that desire for acclaim is uh, what's actually going on there. But these two are juxtaposed because of something very interesting. We have Elijah and Elisha in the first reading. Um, and Elijah, of course, is very important to Carmel, but Elijah is also important to religious life as a whole because Elijah and Elisha, firstly, are two prophets, along with Jeremiah, who are very famous for acted parables. You remember the story of Elisha uh, um, 
been told by God to put the yoke onto his shoulders and walk around uh, Jerusalem with this yoke on his shoulders. And everybody then says, what on earth are you doing? And that gives him the opportunity to be able to say, God says, unless you change your ways, uh, you will wear the yoke of oppression. So his message was acted out. He uh, lived out the message. He also digs the hole in, the, in the, uh, the wall of the city and all these sort of things, this acted parable. So just keep that in mind. And then remember, as this first reading points out, that Elijah and Elisha both uh, live on Mount Carmel with a group of the sons of the prophets, they call them, uh, disciples of the prophets or companions of the prophets living around them. Then if you realize that religious life itself is a prophetic way of life, it's a, it's a life that by living a particular lifestyle, your lifestyle speaks to people. Your life becomes your, uh, your actual homily, not any words you say. And you have this group who live on the mountain. You can begin to see where the beginning of religious life comes from, this idea of living a life that speaks to God this is who God uh, speaks to people. This is who God actually is. Uh, Father Sean Wales lent us a, a DVD once from uh, the Carmel in Notting Hill. And I always remember the words of the prioress who, as a young woman, had gone to Cambridge. Her father had insisted that she finish her degree. Like most parents, I think he hoped that the idea of a religious life would disappear by the time she'd finished the degree. And, experienced uh, the fun of being at university. And she, in her old age, uh, in this interview on the DVD, she said she felt desperately called to live a life which makes absolutely no sense if there is no God. And this truly is what religious life is about. Then you have to say to yourself, well, isn't there the danger, as you see in the gospel, of doing it for people uh, to acclaim you, to uh, live a very public Christian life, a, a Christian life that speaks by the life you live for the wrong reasons. Yes, there is the danger. There's the danger always for all of us that we're doing things for other people to notice rather than for God. But if what you're doing is centered on God, if what you're doing is truly uh, out of love for God, then you aren't actually aware of what you're doing. It's not for other people. It's completely for God. It's like the story of the, the, the young woman who finished her degree, and it was only when she got to uh, the graduation that she discovered that she had um, passed uh, uh, summa cum laude. Um, and it reminds me of the seminary just before uh, I went, and I think this is beautiful actually, but it's died a complete death. They never told you what your marks were. They just told you that you were free to pass to the next year. And it completely took away any uh, um, one-upmanship, any uh, rivalry between people. So it's where our hearts are that matters. You may be doing something which is visible to other people. But if you're doing it for God and to lift other people up, that's one thing. If, it, if you're doing it for other people to notice and other people to think you're special, then you're in trouble. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. 
Blessed be God. And the mystery of this water and wine. May we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. As we prepare to offer this sacrifice of praise, O Holy Father, we humbly ask to be sustained in our service by the prayers of Saint Joseph whom you called to watch like a father on earth over your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and in honouring St. <coughs> Joseph to give you fitting praise, to glorify you and bless you. For this just man was given by you as spouse to the Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and set as a wise and faithful servant in charge of your household, to watch like a father over your only begotten son, who was conceived by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and having given thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, 
therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Stephen our Bishop, uh, Sylvester our Assistant Bishop and all who serve your faithful people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us show one another a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be here. Mm -hmm. 
body of Christ. The body of Christ. Well done, good and faithful servant. Come, share your master's joy. Let us pray. Restored by these life-giving sacraments, Lord, may we live for you always in justice and holiness, helped by the example and intercession of Saint Joseph, who, in carrying out your great mysteries, served you as a man just and obedient. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Amen.